Well, close counts, right? At least in horseshoes, hand grenades, and regression testing. <laughs> Back again, is he going to talk more about regression testing? Oh god, click it off now. No, no, wait, wait, it's good, I promise. Now, my last video on the Epic 32 core and the 7551P showing the same performance anomalies as the Threadripper 2990WX got some attention. So Epic 32 core, Threadripper 32 core, different memory configuration, but similar regressions in certain programs, I got some attention. So thank you all. If you haven't seen that video, it's linked in the description. And this video is probably not gonna make a lot of sense if you haven't seen it. That's not too much to ask. Now, behold, this is my Epic workstation. Now, I've had a lot of questions about building such a beastly workstation, but the good news is the Gigabyte makes it even easier than what I've done here. Basically, I just took that MZ-CE-01, MZ-01-CE-0 motherboard from Gigabyte, stuck it in a fractal case, which is a little off label. Uh, Gigabyte has got you covered. They sell a bare bones workstation that has an appropriate case, power supply, and everything. You just add the CPU and RAM and storage, and that's a great buy, especially in corporate scenarios where purchasing might phone you up and, you know, sort of raise an eyebrow that you can't see, but it's like, what are you doing building your own workstation? Just buy this workstation from Gigabyte, and then upgrade it with some CPUs and RAM and whatnot, and you'll get basically the same result as I am if you want to run Epic. And let me tell you, an Epic 7551P, that's a pretty nice machine. Now, there were a lot of questions that came from that video and the work that I did earlier, and I can address them really quickly, I think. I also did some additional benchmarking for this video and with the Epic 7551, which dovetails with benchmarking that other people have done on the internet. And so that's also presented here. So you get some cold, hard data in addition to me rambling on and on about, about things, which I am working on. I'm trying to get more to the point, faster, shorter videos. That's what this is because that's a thing. Anyway, first question that was probably the most popular is do AMD and Microsoft know about situations like Indigo where Indigo performs weird for mysterious reasons between the 2990 and six, the 32 core and 16 core basically? Well, the answer I have, thanks to Dr. Ian Kutris, is yes. So check out Anantech's coverage of CES and the Core Zero stuff from before. That's all Dr. Ian Kutris. And so huge thank you. Check out their coverage. It's great. The articles, the write-up, everything. They really cover their bases. They really know what they're doing and they've got a ton of automated stuff so they can really check everything. Uh, I also saw people making a big deal out of, you know, this testing. And it's like, let me be clear. Uh, Threadripper and Epic, they're great. They're, this is not like a big deal. This is like weird little edge cases. I mean, really what we're talking about are the, I mean, honestly, they're very pizzly edge cases. These are curiosities of computer science and they really only occur in pretty rare scenarios. And it's probably true that people doing like serious scientific computation are probably on Linux anyway, but all we need to do is get smart people to look at the problem here, at least the problem in Windows, and fix it. It's a software thing. There's not anything wrong with Threadripper and Epic, and some people were making a big deal out of this, like, oh, you can't use anything on Windows. Well, that's not, that's not true at all. Overall, Threadripper and Epic, they really do shred, even on Windows. Threadripper especially, the 2950X, I mean, that's been the most exciting high-end desktop processor in an age. It is a, it's a glorious processor. But this video is really about Epic and like the 32 core monsters. So with Epic, I have yet to uncover any problem that switching from auto interleaving to die interleaving. Basically that's switching from non-uniform memory access to uniform memory access doesn't really get cured with testing these programs. Yes, that does mean you've got to run eight DIMMs, although I haven't tried it with four. I just thought of that. We might, we might be able to do that. But you'll see more of that in the benchmarks that are linked in this video, the B-roll in this video and that kind of thing. Now, it is likely that the real problem is more sticky and nuanced. And I've also heard through the grapevine uh, from internal folks at Microsoft, let's say, that this actually is being looked at seriously. So I'm sure that this is gonna be fixed properly, which is good. I mean, Microsoft can't have the Linux folks on top of performance on what is essentially the, fu uh, you know, the future of computing with these 32 plus core CPUs. I mean, that's really what we're talking about here is super high density CPUs. So. Yeah, Microsoft's going to fix that because the server people are going to be screaming for it in the next generation if they're not already screaming for it. Now, another popular question was, why only Indigo? 
And this question could have two meanings. Uh, if you mean that indigo, why indigo and not Cinebench, because Cinebench doesn't exhibit these issues, I'm not sure. If you mean why indigo and not 7-zip, actually, Jeremy and I have been investigating. We can claw back some of the performance loss that you see in 7-zip. It's very similar to indigo, but it's also a little different. Uh, and Jeremy has actually improved 7-zip very, very recently, and we have some more stuff to talk about with 7-zip and the other stuff, but with uh, the very first version of CorePrio, we could get back about half the performance we lost on 7-zip. But 7-zip tries to manage its own threads, and indigo doesn't. It doesn't seem like it does. So, uh, But we do have some comparisons to some some testing that Pharonix did, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Pretty much everybody can replicate our result with Indigo, and so, uh, and that's doing the manual affinity set. And Dr. Kutris's results were programmatically setting the affinity, and it did a little, but it didn't do as much as what ours did. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it's you know, double digit performance games. So, uh, next up, I saw a lot of comments that were like, well, I mean, the 2990 is like a four socket system, but on a package that presents as a single socket. It's probably where Windows gets tripped up. If we could somehow tell Windows that this is a four socket system, then we would be all set because Windows presumably handles four socket servers fine. Well, that's a good thought, but we can actually test that. You, you can't run Windows 10, the desktop version, uh, like as if it has four sockets, but you, you can run Windows, the same kernel anyway, and that leads to the last popular question. What about server 19? Uh, surely server, server operating system is more optimized for many cores. I mean, you would think that Windows server, the kernel, and Windows desktop, the kernel, would be totally different things. Um, lol, no. Windows has this one kernel philosophy, and here's the blog post where they talk about that from October of last year. And uh, it's from the Windows internals team. And so they talk about how uh, one Windows kernel for mobile and desktop and mini core systems and tablets and laptops and literally everything under the sun. So yeah, it's, it's a one kernel vision, whether you're running you know, a 32 core monster or a one core Atom, one kernel. Now, <laughs> one kernel has a lot of config that happens at boot time. So it's not as if it's catastrophic that it's one kernel, that one kernel kind of implies. Uh, but there's not as much difference between those different versions of the kernel as you'd think. Um, now, server 19 will use the same kernel. There is, in fact, one setting in Windows 10 and Windows Server that will let you sort of change how the system schedules things. And that's this radio button, like, check it out. Yeah, this radio button for optimized for foreground processes or optimized for background processes. On Windows 10, the default is foreground processes. On server, it's optimized for background processes. So that's not really any different with server 19. Now, server 19 might have some improvements over older versions of Windows, but I would expect that the Windows 10 fastering people probably have the same kernel as server 19, if not everyone by now, because usually server runs a little behind the desktop version anyway. Now the one possible exception for this might be Windows 10 for workstations, and that might break the one kernel mantra. At least I, my reasoning is that I think Microsoft needs some guinea pigs to experiment on since they don't really have any internal testing team like they once did. And the server people are likely to scream bloody murder, and the Windows 10, the normies, are likely to scream bloody murder. Windows 10 for workstations. What better place to get some guinea pigs? Because those people are going to be running bleeding edge hardware. They're going to have issues first. It is a foregone conclusion that they'll probably experiment on those people. Now, Windows 10 for workstations and Server 19 does let me do something that I can't do on Windows 10. They support four socket servers. So the question, hey, what about you know pretending like it's a four socket system? We can actually do that. And that means if you have a computer that has four sockets for CPUs, you need Windows Server or Windows 10 for workstations. And I wouldn't be too surprised if there's a, like, oh, if you're going to have more than 32 cores, you need Windows 10 for workstations. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that, even though regardless of the number of sockets that you actually have. Now, Epic and Threadripper, yes, they are only a single socket. It's just a giant monolithic CPU. But there are four Zen dies on the CPU. So 
it's, it's just one socket, but we can use BCD edit to tell Windows that we want to pretend this socket topology is actually four sockets. And we can see that Windows does actually have four NUMA nodes. So there may be something to that. So, you know, this is a best case scenario for Epic since each CPU has its own memory and all that. So maybe if we reconfigure Windows and use BCD edit that something cool will come out of this. So did the benchmarks for that? And the answer was no. No, uh, I used BCD edit to set up four sockets and tested that on server 19. So in the blue are the Pharonix test results and that's their testing core prio from the work that Jeremy now have been, uh, have been doing. Their Indigo result is very suspect here. It's too high, 3.5 on a stock 2990. That's just not gonna happen, I don't, I don't think. I haven't been able to repeat that. So it must've been running on the GPU or something weird or maybe a one in a million run on Windows. Now I initially downloaded the Pharonix test suite and ran it on this Epic system with that V100 in it, the V100, you know, machine learning accelerator card. And I got a crazy high score on Indigo. So I took the GPU out. So I think that's a bit suspect, I think. Now he might've run into the same issues that you know, Dr. Kutras ran into with automated benchmarking, not behaving exactly the same way as running the programs manually. We are working on that on the core prio side of things, uh, you know, at least in terms of like, 7-zip and some of the other stuff because core prio is still beta there's nothing wrong with core prio it's just sometimes the windows internals uh do some weird stuff and it's very difficult to explain or like it doesn't it's not super consistent which is you know troubleshooting an intermittent problem is like the most painful thing ever so the bottom line is how do we make these programs run faster things like adobe premiere these programs are tricky especially programs like premiere because Premiere has a bunch of different components written by different companies that do things. So like right now today, transcoding proxies on Adobe Premiere on the 2990WX is actually face melting. There is nothing wrong with it. It works insanely fast. It is like the best transcoding experience ever. But when you're rendering with Adobe Premiere, it doesn't really seem to utilize the full system. And that's annoying, but it's because of the modular architecture of Adobe Premiere. So I'm still digging into that. Also in the benchmarks, of course, is the BCD edit results that I mentioned before. Now we, we did two runs of that, one totally stock and one with core prio. And note that this is probably not a perfect test methodology. So I tried to ensure that the CPU numbering was such that each group of 16 threads, you know, eight cores, 16 threads, was on the same Zen die. Now I can do that on Linux pretty easily, but doing that on Windows, Windows kind of fought me at every step. So I'm not really sure that I could use BCD edit effectively to make sure that all 16 threads are located on the same Zen die. So that testing with, with uh, BCD edit was probably flawed, but hey, maybe that's a feature request. If you're, if you're listening and can do that, that would be a good feature of BCD edit. So now check this out. This is the most important thing to come out of this testing. And I probably wouldn't have done a video. Windows Server 19 in UMA mode, which you can only do on the Epic, approaches the level of performance that we see on Linux. Wait, what? Hold the phone. Yes, Linux in NUMA mode on the 2990. I mean, so let's talk about the computer science aspect of things for a second. NUMA is meant to help programs perform better by explaining to the program, programmatically, that you know what the architecture is and we can see that with games like grand theft auto and we can explain it with logical reasons that make sense because grand theft auto and numa mode runs better than uma mode on you know threader per 2950 and, and epic and, and everything now linux being as smart as it is can run programs at least as good as unified memory access but actually while in NUMA mode. And we can see that in the benchmark results for most programs. Now remember, Pharonix's Ubuntu testing was all done on a 2990, which were guaranteed to be in non-uniform memory access mode because of the asymmetrical memory configuration. Now on Windows, in UMA mode, most programs are fine. You might hit a small performance hitch, like GTA might be a, a little bit slower, but it's not a 50% regression like we see with Indigo. And that's important. That distinction is, is important for like running the diagnostics and figuring out stuff under the hood. And that's also important for things like 7-zip. Windows and Ubuntu are much closer. You know, there's a relatively minor difference. It's probably down to memory or CPU core clocks. And with core prio and the tweaking and all of the stuff in, you know, with what Windows is doing in NUMA, we can claw back some of the performance. 
But because 7-Zip does a little bit more than Indigo with trying to figure out what to do um, than it does on other platforms, uh, there's maybe a little bit of a problem there. It's a little more difficult than Indigo, let's say. So we see a pattern. Windows and unified memory access can match Ubuntu in non-uniform memory access. And that makes sense. You know, from a computer science standpoint, uh, NUMA is really only meant to ever make things better from a program performance perspective. It, it's not worse. And Linux is well engineered enough that in Ubuntu, NUMA on the 2990 is squeezing all the performance out of the, the platform, out of everything that it possibly can. And you have to concede that Windows in uniform memory access mode is basically fine. So it's not just the Windows bloatedness and overhead. It's not just differences in the Windows platform. I think that's sort of the, the, the final nail on the whole NUMA versus uniform memory access and it also not being a hardware thing. So some of the other results here are pretty interesting in our benchmark results. So be sure to check out those benchmarks if you're into that kind of thing.